Hello friends, in today's video we are going to discuss Lord Dalhousie in detail. Lord Dalhousie is an important figure in modern Indian history. In fact, in the mains of UPSC 2013, this question also came that due to which reasons Lord Dalhousie is also called the founder of modern India. Today we are going to discuss all these reasons in detail. Lord Dalhousie was the Governor General of India from 1848 to 1856. He was the youngest Governor General of India. And during his tenure, on one hand, there was rapid modernization in India and on the other hand, he had set a fire in the country with his annexation policy. In this video, we will discuss the technological development, administrative reforms, social and educational reforms, as well as Dalhousie's policy of annexation during the tenure of Lord Dalhousie. So let's start with the technological development. For the first time in 1853, during the tenure of Lord Dalhousie, the passenger train was introduced in India. This train had three locomotive steam engines which were named Sahib, Sindh and Sultan and 400 people travelled in its first journey. The first passenger train travelled between Bombay and Thane. Thane is one of the largest districts of Maharashtra. The distance covered by the first passenger train between these two places was 34 kilometers and the width of this railway line was 5 feet and 6 inches. In fact, the same standard is followed even today. The width of the broad gauge line is the same even today. No change has been made in it. Now the thing to see is that the world's first passenger train ran in 1825 and just 28 years later that technology came to India as well while India was a slave country then. But if we compare this situation with today's India then the world's first bullet train had run in 1964 and 55 years have passed since this event and in India this wait for the bullet train is still there in the country. Apart from this, in 1854, a new Post Office Act was passed and postage stamps were issued for the first time, as well as a central postal department was created for the entire country, which became a major source of revenue for the British government. And at the same time, the common people also benefited a lot from this. The credit for all these developments is also given to Lord Dalhousie. Apart from this, Bombay and Calcutta ports were also equipped with modern technology. Also, in 1852, the electric telegraph system was also introduced in India. This was a very important development because with the help of telegraph, you can send messages from one corner of the country to the other immediately. At that time, there was no telephone system. So the telegraph system was an important medium. The first telegraph line connected Calcutta and Agra. Basically, in the telegraph system, the Morse code is transmitted from one place to another through the electric line. Now let's talk about administrative reforms. When Dalhousie came to India, before that all public constructions were done by the military, that is to build a bridge, to build a road, the work was done by the military only. So you can understand what would be the condition of the soldiers. But Dalhousie changed this situation. He established a new department for public construction which is called PWD, Public Works Department. This department still exists. And even today, the work of roads, public buildings and bridges is done by the PWD department. Apart from this, the Gorkha Regiment was also formed during the tenure of Lord Dalhousie. And at the same time, Shimla was also made permanent army headquarters. Now let's talk about social and educational reforms. A very important development took place in the field of education at the time of Dalhousie. In his tenure, in 1854, Woods Dispatch came to India which is called Magna Carta of English Education in India. Magna Carta means official beginning, because of which universities were formed in India on the model of London universities. Government schools were opened, new departments were created and many other things happened, about which we have uploaded a detailed video. You will find its link in the description. You can watch that video. The second important reform was that in 1853, an open competition exam was started for Indian civil services. Before that, civil servants could become the same people who were nominated by the directors of East India Company. So from 1853, it became necessary to pass the exam to become a civil servant. 
Its exam used to be held in London only. And there is also a fun fact that one of the many exams of civil services was also for horse riding. The first Indian who cleared this exam was Satyendranath. He was the elder brother of Ravindranath Tagore. And after clearing the exam, he served in Bombay Presidency for 30 years. Till 1871, only four Indians were there who became civil servants. In 1856, during the tenure of Lord Dalhousie, the Widow Remarriage Act was passed. This act gave legal recognition to Hindu widows for remarriage. In addition, Lord Dalhousie abolished female infanticides, that is, killing girls as soon as they were born. Now we will talk about Lord Dalhousie's policy of annexation. Lord Dalhousie was an expansionist governor general. He had annexed Burma, that is, today's Myanmar, by defeating it in the Second Anglo Burmese War. Besides this, after the Second Anglo Sikh War, Punjab was also made a part of the British presidency. Not only this, he had also annexed Satara, Jatpur, Sambalpur, Nagpur and Jhasi by using the famous doctrine of lapse policy. The kings of dependent and protectorate states were not allowed to adopt children in doctrine of lapse. And in this situation, if the king does not have any child, then that state was annexed. On this topic, we have already uploaded a video. To know in detail, you can watch this video. You will find the link in the description. Apart from this, Dalhousie had also annexed Awadh. And the reason given was that the Nawab of Awadh is not able to run the government properly. Awadh is the same state which was given protection by the Britishers after the Battle of Buxar. We have already uploaded an interesting video on the Battle of Buxar. You will find its link in the description. You can watch that video. After doing all this, Lord Dalhousie went back to London in 1856 after being Governor General for 8 years. But the scandals he did, such as the forcible annexation of Awadh, angered the people of Awadh and the Indian soldiers. The annexation of Awadh angered the Muslims as well. And the Widow Remarriage Act also caused a lot of trouble to the Hindus. That's why when Lord Dalhousie reached back to London, and was telling his stories to his friends. At that time, the revolt of 1857 had started in India, which started with a bullet fired from Mangal Pandey's gun. To understand Indian history and Indian polity in detail, do follow Bookstava playlist. Link is given in the description box. Thank you for watching Bookstava.